Right, hello again. Just showed you a very the previous video. I showed you how to open up the lens cover on this. You've always got to remember to do that on this particular model. It doesn't do it automatically like some of the later models do. So simply use the slider. You've opened up the lens cover. Now you're ready to record. Um, and let's just show. So I want to show you how to change the battery. Now the battery that it comes with will give you roughly an hour, forty-five, maybe two hours of recording time. To change the battery, you see that little, see that little button there. If I pull it down towards me, that kind of releases a mechanism. I need to. Oh, it's almost impossible to film this. I need both hands. But once you've, uh, let's put some light on here. Let's get a bit more light on it. There you go. So once you've used your fingernail, your nail kind of fits in the grooves on that button. Use your nail to pull that down, and then pop that button the battery out towards you when that's dead you then obviously need to go and put it on your charger I've given you another battery um, one of these bigger batteries double the size of the little one if you see what I mean um, these ones will give you about four hours maybe four and a half hours of recording time so you'll get a hell of a lot of recording from this particular battery this is not an official Panasonic one this is a like a copy they've made this brand called Duropro and you can see the model of the, the battery is called the VW VBT380, okay? So that's all you need to know, that you get roughly four, four and a half hours of recording on that. And then to put that onto the back of the camcorder, let's say your small battery would run out and you want to now fit the new one. Again, you can just feel it almost is going to fit on. Again, pull that little button down. See the button I've got with my left hand down? And then you should feel the battery slide on you hear a little click and give it a wiggle make sure it is held in place and then to test it has worked open up the camera and if it's worked there you go it's now on okay so that's how to change the battery uh, close it up and now I'm going to show you and then at the bottom of the camera you've got a little flap there that says SD card can you see that SD card yeah you can see it there so again we're using your fingernail flip that up and then what you do you actually push push in so push the card a tiny little thing you push upwards so you're pushing into the camera then let go and then it pops out and then you can take it out this is what videos get recorded to and again this will hold hours of footage so you, you can probably get I don't know four five six hours of videos on this uh, in terms of say you recorded videos that were one minute long I know for a fact you can get over 320 one minute long videos um, on one of these 64. 64 gigabytes is the amount of capacity, the amount of size, okay? So that'll hold hours and hours and hours of footage. Um, and to put it in the camcorder, make sure you put it in the right way round. So this is going to be difficult to do with one hand, but when you've got the camcorder, say you've got the camcorder resting this way, the lens is on the, on the ground it's up like that you, you wouldn't normally do it with one hand but um, you should be able to see the written part of the card on the top when you pop it into the um, the slot okay and then just push it in with your hand and you'll feel it click don't push hard you feel it click and it's that means it's like being held in place properly and then close the flap so that the card can't fall out <laughs> Okay, that's how to change the SD card. I've shown you how to do the battery. Um, when you want to recharge the battery, there is a little f flap on the side. You can plug in the plug there. Get an adult to do that. Don't do that, kids, please. Uh, I should say you can take photographs with this as well. So when you've pulled this open to open it, wait for it to power on. Now. If you just want to take a photograph, you see that little button there, the first button there, that roundish button. If you push that down, I'll just show you what happens on the screen when you do that. You get a very quick flash down the bottom. I'll zoom in so it's ready to do it again. I'm going to press that button on the top again. You see that little red button that you see down the bottom, the shape of a camera? Do it one more time. That shows you've taken a photograph. So you just push that button down to take a photograph. Um, and the amazing thing is you can actually be recording a video, so I'm just going to show you, so I'm going to press record. So I'm now recording a video. Whilst you're recording a video, you can also, let's say you wanted to take a photograph of something while you're taking a video. Again, you push the uh, 
camera button and there you go it's possible to take a photograph while you're taking a video <laughs> if that makes sense so you can do that um, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. Keep it on this IA setting, Intelligent Auto. It's a touch screen, so you can touch, if you touch that, you can change settings, you can change it to different things. M and L would be manual. Don't do that unless you really know what you're doing. There's also a setting called Loop Record, which I use for some something. Let me just touch that. Oh, I'm currently recording, I need to stop. I need to stop the recording before I can go and change the setting. Hold on, stop. Right, now that I've stopped, see that thing called Loop? If you press that, Loop Recording, click OK that means you want sound to record what that means is when you then press record you're recording for one hour uh, in I think it's roughly three minute chunks on the screen so it'll keep recording continuously for an hour and once you get to an hour you can come and stop it if you want and then start it again otherwise it'll start erasing the first bit you're recording of the hour you recorded if that makes any sense so the maximum you can record is one hour. Once it gets to one hour, it'll start going recording over the first thing you're recording. So you can use that if you're recording, um, I don't know, let's say an, an amazing weather situation was happening, like an amazing storm was coming towards you and you wanted to leave this camera recording a scene and you wanted an hour of footage, that's what you could use the loop recording for. Uh, you probably won't use it, but I just thought I'd mention it. So in order to get out of that, I'll click that loop record button up the top there and go back to IA Intelligent Auto. Okay, and for the adult watching this video to explain, you, I've shown you before, oops, click those arrows there, click on the menu button, and that's how you get into those two different setup screens. I'll go, I'll go to the record setup screen. This is where you can adjust stuff. Um, so the zoom mode, let's try and do that, it's hard to do with one hand. Um, it gives you a number of options. If you go for eye zoom off, let's just click that and let's see what happens. Uh, it doesn't show you how much that is doing. But as I know, this camcorder can do 50 times optical zoom and then it goes over to digital zoom. Let's just do that. So if you do eye zoom 90 times, okay, so presumably the first screen only allows you to magnify stuff up to 50 times zoom. If you do eye zoom 90 times, obviously that means you're capable of going up to 90 times zoom. From 51 to 90 is going to be digital zoom. It still looks pretty good. I have to say between 50 and 90 times zoom, it's still pretty good. It's not too bad. Once you go above, if you select any of those other amounts, uh, the quality goes way down because you're obviously stretching the image on the lens. But I would, for the kids to use it, I would keep it on 90 times zoom at most. Oops wrong button because um, otherwise like I said the quality would be so bad OIS is optical image stabilization you want that to be on um, yeah keep the record format as that ABC HD that's fine and then record mode it gives you a selection oh, click the wrong thing hold on and I'll get out of that right click the next thing it gives you these are the options you've got to record in um, yeah, different qualities, and I don't know, I can't remember what these symbols stand for, PH, HA, uh, I don't remember. But you can see that's I interlaced, as you said, the highest quality is actually P progressive, so select that. Now I've got it on 1080p, okay. So you're on screen one of five, let's use the down button there on the side to go through the other menus. Uh, hybrid OIS, that's optical image, so you want that on. Otherwise, when you're recording something, you know, the slightest movement in your hand and you get really shaky footage, so keep the OIS on. I don't change all these settings. Guidelines keep off, it's really annoying. They put, they put like a line on the screen to show you, help you kind of line things up. I find it really irritating. Um, Level gauge, that's actually quite useful. I don't know why I've got it off on this one. Level gauge, I'm going to stick that as to on on this camcorder. Um, and what that is, it looks like a little seesaw setting on the screen and it shows you when you're moving the camera, you know, tilting it from side to side, it can show you that you're not filming level. Um, so that's quite useful. Can't remember what AGS is. Uh, 
mic setup, stereo mic, keep that on. Microphone level is on auto, that's for sound setting. So that's five and five, that's that. So click on exit on that, that's that particular. If I can click the right place on the screen, I will change it, right, that's that. Oh, now somehow I've managed to get those markings on the screen. I don't want those. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, that's that level gauge. It's completely different on the camcorder I'm using. That's why I forgot about that. So um, I would actually get rid of that. That's going to be quite annoying. So click those arrows, click on menu, click record setting. Uh, I'm going to use the down button. Where's that setting? Guideline. Oh, level gauge. I'm going to switch that to off now because that is actually really huge on the screen off right now I can exit that okay now that's gone that was really annoying that was too much okay um, so again click those arrows click menu now I did record setup now I'm going to do setup and then this has got eight screens on it so you can adjust how long you want the display to be on before it switches off I've currently got it on five seconds that doesn't think very much does it what else can you do oh that's your only options, okay. <coughs> Not much use. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. What's the difference between display on? What's this display? Oh, the touch screen isn't, it isn't exact, it has to be said. You have to be quite precise where you put it. Right, five seconds. Maybe that just means the display will go away after five seconds instead of like permanently on anyway. Clock set. Obviously, this is where you touch these to adjust the date. It is the 9th of August, 2023. Uh, time is actually 2.31 on my computer, so this is slightly slow. Let's adjust that. So click on that and then use the arrows to go up or down. 31, it must be closer to 32 than 31, I think. In fact, the thing to do is if you've got a computer open, go to time.is. That's the, the website. Okay, time.is. Go to that website and they'll show you what time it is exactly. And that's how what I nearly always use to um, set clocks in my house, set, set my watch, set camcorder times, um, trail cameras. I seem to always be having to adjust time on something almost on a daily basis. So as you can see, it's almost coming up to two. 2.32, so I'm going to get that, get that ready for 2.32. I've got a few more seconds and then I need to press. Uh, hard to do this with one hand. Uh, and then I press enter to set it. And now set it. Oh, this is really difficult to hold a camcorder in one hand and attempt to adjust stuff on another camcorder. Anyway, um, world clock. Oh, a we'll link to summertime, put that on. Otherwise, it'll be like minus one hour and stuff it gets quite confusing at times um, let's see what else we got so date and time oh you can have the date and time showing up on the screen I don't think you need to because when you put the, the SD card into your computer it will tell you on each file what date and time things were recorded it's just a case of do you really want the t date and time printed onto the screen I don't think I want to uh, the date and time format you can click that and adjust it say some people want the month first month day you know you can do that if you want to um let's just leave all those things as they are oh sorry click the wrong button i want the arrow oh, yeah the, the, the screen is pretty small so it's quite easy to make mistakes especially when you're as i said trying to do things while holding a camcorder right um Economy battery is on. I guess that's designed to save battery life. Alert sounds. Now I've got it off because of where I film. I don't want it to be making beeps. It's actually a, a good idea for you to have alert sound on. Let's just show you what happens. Uh, so what's the... Why is there two settings there? One or two. What's the difference between those first two? I don't know. Let's click the first one. Ah, there you go. See that beep? So it makes sounds when you press buttons. Um, leave that on. Do that adjustment, please. Um, it's useful to know. Also, it makes a noise when you press record. So I'll do another recording in a minute. Sorry, let's go next menu screen. Four. You see, it makes a beep when you press stuff now. Um, 
power LCD. Let's just. Now what are the options on here? What's the plus and minus? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to leave it on zero, whatever that is. I don't even remember. To be perfectly honest, um, it seems to be on zero. Uh, go to the next screen. Um, TV aspect 16 by 9, that's what you want. So, the kind of widescreen setting. Um, I presume you can adjust it. Let's just have a look. TV aspect, what else can you do? Oh, yes, you can do the more boxy screen if you wanted the old school way of filming stuff 4 3, but keep it 16 9 like that. I'll press that to get it right. Um, where are we? Screen 6. Now, you can format your SD card if you ever need to. It's always a good idea when, when you've got a brand new SD card, format it even if it seems as if it's going to record okay uh, and then it should record fine. Don't ever press that after you've recorded some stuff that you want to keep because obviously you will erase everything on the card. Um, next. So there's some demonstrations of how things work, I presume. Let's do the OIS demo. What does that do? Optical image stabilization. Okay, so that would that would show you how tilted you were. So I'm tilting the screen quite a bit. That just shows you how it would work if you wanted to. Um, let's do exit on that. Oh, and I've gone completely out of that. So let's go menu, setup. Now let's get back to where we were. Was that software info? Right now, I can exit. That's now set up. So you've got the time and date set. Blah blah blah. Now for you, for the kids, make sure it's on. Oh, IA Intelligent Auto. And that's it. That's how to use it. Um, so let's zoom in, zoom out when you're recording. Record, uh, take photographs. Showing you how to change the battery. Um, I've given you a battery charger to charge the batteries off the camera. Don't forget to open up that little button there whenever you want to record stuff and obviously close it. These cameras do seem to quite often get little bit specks of dirt and dust stuck on this uh, the lens cover. Here's a, I bring a bit of glass over the lens there but that can quite often get dirty and if you touch it with your finger you also get fingerprints so remember to give the um, screen there a little clean uh, each day that you use it and always check that because sometimes you can record videos and then when you go to look at them on your computer you can see that you've had some dirt on the screen it's quite annoying really um, so that's where it picks up the sound at the front there it doesn't have a uh, external microphone which is like a gray fluffy thing you've probably seen on my other camcorder um, so wind noise is a problem on these if you go somewhere windy uh, it really does the wind going in these little holes here makes a horrible noise so the sound quality is not good on a windy day you will really suffer from wind noise on these cameras but for the price that's as good as you're going to get oh one more thing i want to show you on the bottom if you do have a tripod and tripod plate you've got that there to screw the tripod into and the tripod plate first obviously um or that exact same screw hole there is a perfect size you can buy uh, let's just show you. Uh, this is the neck strap that I use. The one I've got is called High Guy. I can't remember how much I paid for it. It's probably about twenty pounds on Amazon a few years ago. So that's the bit that goes over your neck, nice and padded. And then this would be dropping these straps drop down the front. And let's just show you how to do this. So you then simply screw the camcorder onto, and make sure you do it perfectly i've only once ever had my camcorder fall off this and i had to spend half an hour trying to find my camcorder somewhere i've been um so make sure you're absolutely sure it's on tight and flat make sure it feels like the screw's gone in perfectly and tighten up quite well and then you can put the um, neck strap on and you can be walking around with the camcorder you know kind of hanging down by your waist i'll just stand up to and give you a little demo of that okay so it hangs 
you don't ever want to be running while you've got the camcorder on like this because obviously you, you then end up banging it around you don't want to damage it and one more thing these are fragile these cameras i've had one on a tripod once i turned around to go and get something out of my rucksack for just a few seconds and a gust of wind blew the tripod over with the camcorder on and uh, the camcorder was broken you've got a three-year warranty I've, I've bought for the person i'm telling this video to specific, specifically uh, you have to buy that separately on um, Amazon. So you've got a three-year warranty. If something goes wrong, you can send it back and they will repair it if they can. If not, they'll give you the value of the camera and so you can go out and buy another one. Um, there you go. Hope that's of use. Uh, and I, oh, I say, Close that when you're not using it to protect the lens from getting dirty. Um, look after it. They're brilliant devices. You'll be amazed at the picture quality when you do actually watch stuff back on your... TV and I should say yeah these these camcorders work perfectly if you plug them into Panasonic um, TVs so I'll just open it up and show you I think they give you an HDMI cable um, in the box with this so you plug HDMI cable in there obviously and then the other end of the cable into your TV's HDMI um, socket and I think it's usually something like HDMI 2 you'll probably find is the channel to put it on and then you can Use your Panasonic TV um, remote control to go through the video menu and um, watch the videos on your TV if you want to. Other method is obviously to take the SD card out. So remember what I said, you push in slightly on the on the card and then it releases. So this is hard to do with one hand and I'm right handed as well, I'm trying to do it left handed. Take the SD card out and then you You've probably got something like this. If you haven't buy one, they're only about two pounds. One of these integral SD card readers. Stick that in there. Hold on. Just gonna give you an example of what you can do when you're recording stuff. And the trick is obviously to learn how to hold the camcorder steady. It's uh, it's quite a trick. I've always been pretty good at it, if I say so myself, because I've seen people film exactly the same planes as me at the same time when I watch their footage, <laughs> they're all over the place. Um, so it takes a trick. Anyway, back to this. So you then stick the SD card into the reader, and then you would plug that, obviously, into a USB slot on your computer. And then, um, shall I show you that as well? The kids aren't going to be doing this, but I might as well actually show you. So plug that in. Okay, you should get a blue light flashing on the integral device. Uh, and just to show you, let's get my, let's get everything out of the way so it's not confusing. Right, and then automatically you should get up, um, a folder like this should pop up on your, God, why is my computer? Hold on. My screen seems to be very dirty. <laughs> I need to clean the screen on this. It, yeah, it must be filthy. It just looks really dirty. It probably is, right. Anyway, that'll open up. Um, let's just show you. DCIM are your photographs. So let's click on that. Ignore all these little white ones. You don't need that. The, it's the yellow folders that will have your photos in. And as you can see, it gives you the time and date that the stuff was recorded. So these should be the test ones. Let me just, before I click on them, let me double check what were the, uh, what was I taking a picture of? Oh, okay. All right, so I was just taking pictures of my, my keyboard was in front of me when I was doing those test shots. So obviously if you want to see what the pictures are, you just simply double click on them. It'll open up and there you go. You've got a photograph of a keyboard. How wonderful. Um, let's get rid of that. And then obviously if you don't want to keep it, you can uh, right click on it, get the menu to pop up and then go down and uh, left click on delete. It'll then delete that picture and there you go. And then if you want to, let's click on another one, see what that is, another keyboard. So let's just say you did want to keep that. Uh, right click on it, go down to rename. 
and then using your keyboard you type in whatever it is so I'll, I'll call it key keyboard and then click somewhere off where you're typing where there's white space and there you go that now you've labeled that photo as keyboard now you, if you ever want to find it you can find keyboard okay and I'm just gonna use the back button on there oh, where's the back button so going out of the photos and if you don't want to keep any of those photos you can just delete the entire folder and then private click on private click on avchd click on bdmv click on stream and then that's where your your videos get saved and it's the same process click on it i've got vlc player set to open these videos um play the video decide what it is and then you can relabel it or delete and, and that's how you do that okay Right, I hope that video has been of use to you. I'm going to stop now. Um, I think I've covered everything. Um, so a neck strap would be a good idea to get. So I'd say roughly £20. That's all you need to spend. Right, I hope those two videos explaining how to use this uh, Panasonic V180 are useful. I hope the kids I've given it to uh, create many brilliant videos in the future. Right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.